set the scene for this film, the crime of robbery of a liquor store is used. An important part of every investigation is to find an eyewitness if possible. An eyewitness can consist of a victim, such as a proprietor of this store, or a person passing by or living in the immediate vicinity. An eyewitness does not necessarily have to be one who saw everything, but can be any person who can add any important detail to the investigation, regardless of how minor it may be. such as this one, go into the business office where officers attempt to evaluate and dispatch the necessary police equipment to the scene. In a major crime such as this, the desk officer attempts to save time by getting pertinent information from the person calling in so that the pickup information may be broadcast to all cars. This will serve to expedite the investigation and will allow the police units that are dispatched to the scene to be on the lookout for the criminals who may be speeding towards them. In addition to the message, the radio operator will dispatch the unit specified. Upon receiving this message, the assigned police unit will so report and will then... In proceeding to the scene of the crime, the police car will be operated at a normal rate of speed unless the radio operator indicates by code that the case is of an emergency nature and that they are to operate as an emergency vehicle. When operating as an emergency vehicle, the unit must use the siren and red lights, and although other vehicles on the road must yield the right of way to them, they have no right to disregard traffic conditions which might cause an accident and which they could ordinarily avoid. The officers arriving at the scene first must immediately secure information which will serve to identify the criminals and their means of escape. Time is very important at this point, so the basic information should be broadcast as soon as possible to avoid allowing the criminals to get so far from the scene that they may become lost in the maze of streets and people. Should the detective unit arrive at the scene shortly after the, the patrol unit, the uniformed officers must convey what information they have collected to the detective. If the uniformed officers are no longer needed at the scene of the crime, they should return to their car for assignment or a pursuit of the criminals, as they will be far more useful in searching the vicinity of the crime. To repeat, it is important that the basic information and descriptions of the suspects should be broadcast as soon as possible. This first pickup information may later be improved upon as to accuracy or added to as the case may be. In the event it is believed the criminals are trying to leave the city, a 
blockade may be activated. Such a blockade will be activated by the captain on duty, directing the lieutenant of the business office to broadcast the blockade code. This blockade is activated by radio code, and each unit takes a definite prearranged assignment establishing a blockade around the entire city within a matter of minutes. Blockade equipment is maintained at each blockade post in order that the necessary equipment may be immediately available within as short a time as possible. set up according to a prearranged plan, and the plan is flexible to allow for day or night blockade procedures, or setting the equipment on four, three, or two-lane highways and according to the speed zone of that location. Specific units are assigned to man the blockade post. The remaining units in the field also operate according to a plan, covering off on the beats left uncovered by the units operating the blockade posts. The special detail and detective units are assigned from the business office to fill an immediate need in any area to assist with the investigation or at blockade posts. Plain clothes units would be assigned to cover railroad depots, bus depots, and the airport. All points into and out of the city would be covered. The San Diego County Sheriff may also operate a blockade in the county. Either the Sheriff's blockade in the county or the San Diego Police blockade of the city may be activated to assist each other. This city and county blockade covers all main roads into and out of this area.
not uncommon for criminals to steal a car to aid them in committing their crimes, and later abandon it to steal another to throw off pursuers. In this picture, the criminals have mechanical difficulties and are forced to abandon the car. Upon discovery of the car used in the escape, the officer should immediately report this information to headquarters for decision as to further action. If the pursuit is fresh, additional units will be dispatched in an endeavor to apprehend the criminals before they can escape from the vicinity. After notifying headquarters, the officer should immediately attempt to find an eyewitness who may be able to furnish valuable information as to criminals' actions and especially the direction and means of their escape.
searches, it is important for all officers to make as many contacts with citizens as possible without interfering with their search duties. Citizens who are or have been working outside and would likely to have seen or will see the suspects should especially be contacted. In these contacts, the officers should furnish citizens with enough information that will enable them to aid the officers in watching for the criminals. This method adds considerably to the number of persons who are on the lookout for the criminals and diminishes their chance to escape. Stopping the suspect's car, the officers must attempt to stop their car to the rear and slightly to the outside left of the other car. The officer who is not driving should immediately alight and approach the criminal's car from the right after looking through the interior of the car over quickly from the rear window. He should then direct the occupants of the car to get out on the left side of their car. Meanwhile, the officer who was driving should have alighted and standing near the police car cover the left side of the criminal's car. 
One officer will search the prison, while the other will keep them covered. The officer conducting the search should give all directions in order to avoid confusion. In placing the prisoners in position for the search, they must be spread-eagled enough so they cannot readily move into a standing position. Once in position, the officer must conduct a thorough search of the prisoners, removing all offensive weapons and evidence. Placing the prisoners in the police car, precautions must be taken to prevent their escape and from attempting any assault upon the driver of the car or other officer. This requires their being placed in a proper position in the police car and constantly guarded by the officer who is not driving. Carelessness in placing or seating prisoners in the car or a lack of vigilance can very easily result in serious injury to the officers and the escape of the prisoners. and 
and also to the California State Department of Criminal Identification and Investigation. These agencies, in turn, will report back to the police department of any past records of arrests or whether the prisoner may be wanted by some other law enforcement agency for some other crime. After fingerprinting, major criminals are photographed for purposes of future identification. When the booking procedure is completed, the prisoners are then placed in cells pending further investigation and court trial. Before the trial and during the investigation, the prisoners will be questioned and their statements taken. Present police methods of interrogation revolve around the knowledge of interviewing techniques and psychology to gather the information necessary, rather than the use of force. Force in securing confessions is not allowed in courts, and the modern police officer resorts more to the use of intelligence and strategy. Upon taking the prisoners into court, the officer's job is finished after he has intelligently gathered and presented his evidence and testified to the facts.